All right. Okay, I think we're I think we're a go here. Sup, Perry's, Leisha, Amada. Uh, is that Terrin? Not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct. Janet, how you doing? And all right, welcome everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Well, I'm going to continue on my uh, drawing here of <coughs> this female lion, and uh, you can see the progress I've made so far. And let me tell you something, this has been an extreme challenge for me because I have never done anything like this before. And so anything I say, uh, this is my disclaimer, is not gospel as far as techniques or methods to do this. I will share what I'm doing. It may be the way to go. It may not be the way to go. But it is the direction that I'm going uh, right now. And I'm kind of, you might say I'm kind of learning as I'm going. As I'm doing this, I'm, I'm seeing what works and what doesn't work. At least, you know, um, it looks like I'm able to at least uh, make a facsimile of lion fur. Though... Um, I have my reservations as to um, the legitimacy of it, <laughs> I guess. Now, I've uh, incorporated a few different items that I don't normally use, and that is mechanical pencils. And I've chosen these because they keep a fine point, and uh, I have <clears throat> different, different points. I have a couple of point threes here, which are very, very fine, and... Um, I have one here labeled a 2H so that uh, it it barely shows up and uh, I think it works great for just giving a slight hint that there's something there. Uh, I have a B, B one here so that I can get a little more detailed uh, between the hairs like for here for instance and then maybe a little shadow down here and and so forth. Uh, I've done a lot of work with the, my Tombow eraser where I am going to um, <clears throat> I cut a wedge on this thing and and uh, I use it to kind of remove some of the graphite and then there are areas within the image itself that I'll use um, the low tack frisket as you can see I have here and I'll I'll take this and maybe a toothpick or maybe you know one of my pencils like a 4H or whatever that's got a hard it's you know a hard lead and then I'll I'll come in here and and just kind of do that and lift off um, some of those highlights and kind of give the impression that there is fur as opposed to hair I guess fur. Um, now, in the reference photo, the contrast is pretty stark here. It's, you got your black, 
and your white and your midtones here are very contrasty. But in my drawing, I've resorted to using more graphite than charcoal. And because of that, I have, you know, you get that lighter tone, more graphite gray. I guess you call it the graphite gray, except for the around the eye here where I've gone in with charcoal to give me the black blacks. And also in some areas like within here and here in some patches where I will lay down some charcoal uh, just as an area, for example, here. And then if you'll look closely, you'll see that, let's see if I can get this in the camera here. I'm going to try to center this. Uh, well, that's probably the best I'm going to be able to do here. Uh, but I'll lay down some charcoal here. And then you can see the white hairs going over the dark spotted area. And so I'll lift that out with the... Uh, eraser or the tape and uh, give it that that kind of look that there's white hairs coming over a dark area so I'm still working in this particular area right here this area is only in its beginning stages and it's probably evident so for example uh, one another thing too by the way I'm going to mention um, so nothing's left out is I've taken a paper clip and I've bent it out and then I've taken sandpaper and I've rounded the point here so it doesn't tear my paper and you can see maybe you can see very subtle white lines going through here and that is because what I've done is I've I've gone on the paper like this like for example I can do it for this part right here because I haven't started working here yet and I'll take this, for example, and let's see, we're, let me just use this one here because it's got the grid on it. So, for example, I could see that I've got hair that comes up and over and like this, fur that goes like this. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of dig that in. It's just pretty random. I'm not looking for every hair to line up or anything. I definitely don't want that. All right, and you can't really see it, but it, what I've done is I've indented my paper here. And I've noticed that <clears throat> I have a lot of mid-tones here, so I'm gonna be going heavy charcoal uh, and little to no char, I mean, sorry, heavy dark graphite with very little charcoal, because uh, this is more in the graphite realm of tone right here and so uh, usually what I'll do is I'll <clears throat> I'll start with the base tone which is like the 2H for example and I can come in here with my 2H and do this or I could use any anything that I want just because I'm going to ride it above those little lines that I put in there with the indentation I'd come in here like so I might as well go into this last grid too, why not finish off the top row here. I still haven't finished this part yet, just, just so you know, but um, I'm going to skip around here because uh, I want to at least share what I'm doing uh, other than bore you to death with watching me uh, make grass grow. So I come in here, let's see, this one here I got is a 4B by the way. It's a good mid-tone. Graphite 4B, 6B, good midtone graphite. And I'm not sure if you could see that. I hope you can. I could see it, of course, where I'm at here. And I am kind of staying within the, the square of the grid. And I've been doing that throughout this thing just, just for giggles, I guess. So if you look, Let's see, I, um, it's really hard to um, show this, it looks like, on the camera. Well, let me go ahead and bring it up close, and I'm going to try to see if I can um, show that. Let me 
you see I'm off camera here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. This is a webcam. And so the quality isn't that great, unfortunately. But I think you could kind of make out the white lines on there. And that's that's how I've been starting um, this whole thing is for each square, I'll start off with whatever direction the hair is going and just kind of get that in there first. Then give it a little bit of that uh, mid-tone graphite. And then a tool that I've been using heavily is the blending stump and I'll come in here and I'll <clears throat> just lightly stroke this thing to um, give it a slight bend and everything kind of pops better that way but also make I don't have any harsh lines I don't want anything harsh throughout this whole process I'm trying to make kind of a somewhat soft fur here and I'm bleeding into the neighboring squares on purpose because I don't want every square to have its own identity then it starts to look blocky um, and I see areas where I have to do modifications to change that <clears throat> so I'll, I'll bleed over <clears throat> seems like I got a frog in my throat okay <clears throat> well, sorry. Didn't mean to include sound effects into this live session here. All right. It's a lot of studying of uh, the reference photo. Now, this is just a printout with the grid on it. <clears throat> this is actually my reference here, which gives me the actual tone. So I'll use the reference for the tones, but I'll use the the grid here for the details uh, what I want now what I'm gonna look at here for example and let me get the pencil I need first and that's going to be I'm gonna go with a 10B pencil here let's see yep 10B um, if you will look at this area right here this is the dark <clears throat> midtones here very dark midtones even on the reference, it's not necessarily charcoal black. It's more of a super dark graphite tone. For, that's the way I see it. Compare this to that. That's charcoal black there, and that's charcoal black. So this is more of a mid-tone graphite style. So I'm going to use one of my darkest graphites. This is a 10B pencil, for example. And I'm going to lay down that dark tone just for mostly that area that I have right here for the most part and that comes down to right there and notice how those white lines start to really come out too that I've uh, indented into the paper. All right. And I don't worry about getting up here. I, I come, once in a while, I'll come by with my eraser and I'll erase all that off. So it's not a big deal. Now, you can see I'm not going for the exact shape of this detail here because I'm going to control that with my eraser. So I just wanted to get the tone in there. In this case here, I'm getting the dark tone in here. There's a little bit of it here. I just want some of it here, some of it here. And notice I'm not drawing details. I'm just putting down tones. Just some tones that I see on this drawing here. Just putting those down, okay? And I'm good with that. And now again, I'm gonna take my blending stump and I just want to knock it down smooth it out you might say but also gently don't press in the paper 
big mistake. And I'm just going to soften it down, just knock it down, just gently, but, but keep it on the surface so I could pick it off with my erasers. And um, it's hard for me to explain how much pressure, but I'm using no pressure. I'm just sliding this, okay? And you just slide it in there like so and, and let it go. And let's see, I'll probably put some of that here to see if I can blend some of it on the outside there. But that's pretty much what I'm going for right there. <clears throat> then I'm going to use a lighter because I need lighter graphite for this area here. So I think I'm going to go with a 6B pencil. So I'm going down from a 10B down to a 6B. And I'll just kind of lightly, again, holding in the back of the pencil here. And for those who care to know this happens to be a Tombow. Until I use these pencils up, these Tombows, uh, I won't be switching over to the other brands that I have and want to use, like the Mitsubishi or the Stadler. I even got some Prisma colors I might want to goof around with. I use what I have as long as it's a decent pencil. Um, if it's not, I won't use it. I give it away to the kids. All right. So not my kids. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. My kid is grown up, but uh, other kids that I know who want to get better at drawing and stuff, and I give them pencils and sh erasers and sharpeners and things like that. You know. So get that in there. So you see right off, I have this dark tone pattern here and here. And then I have this lighter 6B, which again, I'm going to take my, my blending stump and I'm just going to glide it on there just like this. Just glide it on. Just knock it down nice and soft. Just like that. All right. All right, so I have two tones down, which provides me the foundation to do the rest of the magic here. So now I've pretty much used this up. So I'm going to cut me a new one here. And it comes off of this sheet of low tack frisket. And what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to cut me off a strip. And then it peels, so I get it to peel. I play with it a while. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll just fold over the paper like so. It gives me something to hold on to without losing all the stickiness. Uh, like that and in this case here I could I could use this toothpick for example and then I'm going to look at the pattern here of where everything is so I'm coming in here and I'm going like this it's pretty random don't look for perfection I'm I'm dealing more with direction than anything else here this looks like it goes up like this, so I'm going to go up like this. You can see I'm just flying with this toothpick here. And then pull it up and look. Make sure you're getting it where you want it. I see I got this pattern going here, so I want that there. I'm going to go like that. Get that pattern in there. There we go. See, like that. Uh, I got this dark blotch here, but I don't have it here, so I'm going to definitely go over it more. See, it starts to disappear. Okay, and I'm going to bleed into this other square a little bit so that you don't see any demarcations. Okay, now 
Over on this side here is the other side of this dark area. I want to get those. It kind of goes like this. And the nice thing about this is if you don't like the way it turns out, you can start over to a point, of course. After a while, you can't lift off too much. All right, give me a clean strip here. Now, this area here, I need to start fill, you know, getting some details going here because this is a this is a dark bar, but this here only has this area here and here, and then this is kind of overwhelmed with some uh, white hair. So I'm just going to kind of, and here's another thing: if you use the area that you've already used on the tape, that makes it very random because not all of this is going to pull it up, which is really cool. Gives you a cool effect sometimes. Uh, and doesn't you just don't see these drastic lines uh, from the tape coming out? So see, I can just go over and over, and it won't take that much off. I just I'm gonna go in the clear area here. I want to take a look at that. There's more. Okay. All right. Try to get as random as you can, but try to stick with the direction. A little bit up here, it looks like here. Yep. And lighten that up a little bit. Yeah, that's starting to look good there. A little bit more maybe. I'll take that top off. Okay. And we got this area here. I can get a little more little more detailed now. I can see this area I want to go a little heavier in. So I'm going to come in here and just kind of go over it like that. See, so kind of match that up. I uh, see I got a little bit too much dark here. I like to filter some of that out. So I'll just do that. Okay. Make sure I get my pattern right. Yeah. All right, and we got this part here. Okay, and like that, and like that. You get a nice random fur pattern going here, but get it somewhat close to the reference. You're not going to get perfect, obviously. Too many. Too many fine details to be messing with, and nobody really cares. They're not going to go, let me see that reverence photo. I want to make sure you got every hair in the exact place. Well, that's not going to happen. And if it did happen, I'd say, go look at someone else's drawing. Don't look at mine. All right. Let's see here. Okay, I still need more attention over here. I could see that. All right. I will give you more attention because you want more attention. Here we go here. And here. Just keep looking at your reference, making sure you got it. Okay, now I'm going to stop there for a second. And now I'm going to start getting in between the little white hairs here and start putting some shadows in there. I'm going to start with my B pencil here, the mechanical first. And see if I can get what I want with that, and then I can go with something darker. But I'm just going to get the details going here. See, this is a perfect time to start getting very, very detailish. I haven't done this area yet. I'm not even finished, and I started on a new square here for you guys. <laughs> I should probably give this a little bit of attention, too, while I'm here. 
before I forget. But give those some of those areas of the hair, especially these white areas, you want some shadow in there somewhere. Just just all the subtle, just very subtle. It's a nice thing about a mechanical pencil is you, you can get really fine with, with the lines and your details. And I look for these patterns too, try to mimic these patterns as best I can. Come in with my eraser and and erased areas out that that aren't letting the pattern show up. Areas that look like dots or whatever, make sure you get all those in there. And it's kind of a tedious process, so don't be in a hurry to, you know, get things done here. I'm going to get underneath some of these white hairs here. I see these little shapes. I like to just kind of, with my eyes slightly squinted, you know, look at some of those shapes and see if I can mimic some of those. I don't have to get them all. I just need to get a few of them and let the eyes trick you. A little, here's like a V. I want to get this sideways V here just because it just pops out at me. So, like, why not? Doesn't cost any extra to put it in. See, Rick, you're so anal. Yep. You start getting fur, you know, at least the Rickster's impression of fur, anyway. I have this, uh, what do I do with it? Here it is. I have this 4B, which is the AIN lead and it can get really dark for a 4B. So I can come in here and don't put a lot of pressure in though because you'll get that glare. You don't want that. But I know I'm going to have to go in an eraser and lighten that up because I uh, I went too, too much with that. I'm going for pattern here. A little bit of details and pattern. Little things that look like sideway Y's, you know, you like split hairs or something, you know, I just kind of try to mimic that if I can. And then I'll just come in here with my eraser or my blender and dumb it down, go over it again, dumb it down, go over it again, dumb it down. And then you get layers. That's how you get layers. And that's the process that I have been using to draw that fur. As you can see what I've just done here, and I'm not, not done yet. But if you look, compare the two, you can see that it is well on its way 
to be almost the same. See that? Not too chabby, eh? So, hope you got something out of that. Now this hair doesn't do as fine hair as that low tack, so I have to be very careful with it. So I'll just do some touch-ups with this Tombow here to give it the impression of direction. I know that doesn't belong there, so I take that out there a little bit. And let's see, I tone that down here. That there I already mentioned was a little too strong. Take that out, get underneath there, take that out a little bit and thin it out. There we go. Get that out there. A couple of white lines right there, put those in, why not? Lighten that up, lighten that up, and then go over it again. Okay. Two H pencil for those hairs you just can't see. And you still won't see it when I'm done with this. But the eyes will pick up on some of them and it will give a nice illusion. Now, where is my 2B pencil here? Nice point. Fine details, just fine details that are a little darker than the, the other hairs there. I want those in there. All right, so off camera, that means when I'm not live, I'm going to finish up this area here 
and then I'll come back and touch up anything I need to do here. But I wanted to demonstrate the method I was using to draw this fur. And I think I've got that point demonstrated pretty good. So a couple areas here like this. I want to This is a tortellini, tortellone, tortelloon, chicken tortellini. Got to knock down those two B marks that I put on there. Okay, so I will work on more of that later. But anyway, that's that's the uh, approach that I'm taking to drawing this fur. And pretty much everything I do from here on is pretty much just uh, more of the same over and over. Um, so I will finish up on this later. There's a few things that I want to do, like right here. But it's going to be, when I'm doing it, it's going to be very tedious. I'm just going to be in here going really, really slow and putting in very fine details. This one's too light. I got the wrong pencil. Putting in very fine details. And you guys are going to fall asleep. And I can't keep talking because I... At this point, I need to play music <laughs> and just chill and relax and let my hands go to sleep because that's what happens when I work so tediously like this. But I wanted you to see the procedure or the, the steps that I'm taking. I put the indentations in. I go over with a, a base, you know, somewhere like a, a, a B pencil, for example, or a 2B pencil, get that graphite base in there because this is definitely graphite toned even on the reference photo and then I go in with a darker for or I blend it down smooth it down then I come in with the darker 10b in this case I used which actually this could go a little bit even a little bit darker as you can see <clears throat> so I could go in if I want with an extra hard charcoal if I wanted to with a point or I can come in with a my 12B if I want or put more 10B and not knock it down as much. But anyway, it's it's a matter of you put down your layers, blend it, take some out with your uh, eraser or the tape, put some more on, take some out, blend it, take some out, put some more on, do it again, more on, more on, more on. So you just, you're, you're layering and you're putting layers and then the hairs start developing uh, depth. Okay, and that's what that's what I'm aiming for on this. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for today. That's a short live session because, well, the lesson's relatively short. There's not a whole lot that I need to talk about here. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, now would be the time to ask. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a few minutes here to type up any questions that you have. And if there are no questions, then I'll be signing off. And uh, I'll work on this later on today and continue to work on it.
right. Well, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thanks for dropping in, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time in my next live sessions. Have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye.